Amiodron causes thyroid dysfunction by virtue of the high iodine content. It can cause hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism and thyroiditis. Amiodron is one of the most widely used antiarrhythmic drug. 200 mg of Amiodron daily would deliver 20 to 40 times the usual daily iodine intake. Hypothyroidism occurs in iodine sufficient areas and hyperthyroidism occurs in iodine deficient areas. Amiodron reduces 5 deiodinase activity and thereby the mono deiodination of T4 to T3. There is decreased generation of T3 and reduced clearance of reverse T3 which accumulates. Destructive thyroiditis is due to the direct toxic effect of amiodron and its metabolite on thyroid follicular cells. Screening for pre-existing thyroid disease and thyroid function prior to initiating amiodron are ideal in cases where the drug is being started on an elective basis. Thyroid scan results may not be interpretable once a significant dose of iodine in the form of amiodron has been delivered into the system, especially after an intravenous initiation of therapy in life-threatening situations. Periodic follow-up with thyroid function tests are also recommended while on long-term amiodron therapy. Thyroid stimulating hormone level is one of the earliest to rise with amiodron and can occur as early as 48 hours, reaching nearly three times the normal levels by 10th day. Amiodron induced hyperthyroidism is less common than hypothyroidism. Amiodron induced hyperthyroidism has been classified into two types. Type 1 due to excessive iodine induced synthesis of thyroid hormone. Type 2 is due to amiodron induced destructive thyroiditis. Type 1 amiodron induced hyperthyroidism can be treated with withdrawal of amiodron if the clinical condition permits. It may be noted that due to the long half-life of amiodron, stopping of the drug may not bring any immediate relief of hyperthyroidism. Moreover, there can even be an initial worsening as amiodron blocks peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. Very often, the clinical condition may not permit withdrawal of amiodron as it is often used for life-threatening cardiac arrhythmias. If withdrawal of amiodron is not an option, Treatment with thioamide drugs like carbamazole, methamazole or propyl thiouracil may be needed. Higher doses of these drugs may be needed due to the high iodine levels in the body. Though propyl thiouracil was initially preferred for amiodron induced thyrotoxicosis as it reduces peripheral deiodinase activity, a safety warning has been issued due to its potential liver toxicity. Amiodron induced thyroiditis may be treated with corticosteroids. Antithyroid drugs may be needed in certain cases. Some of these cases of amiodron induced thyroiditis with hyperthyroidism may eventually become hypothyroid. Other therapeutic measures like thyroidectomy, plasma pheresis, lithium, and radioiodine ablation of thyroid are reserved for refractory cases of amiodron induced thyrotoxicosis and seldom needed. Amiodron vs. Sotelol for atrial fibrillation trial substudy involving 612 patients documented subclinical hypothyroidism with TSH levels between 4.5 to 10 milli international units per liter in 25.8% of those treated with amiodron. TSH levels above 10 milli international units were noted in 5%. In older males, hypothyroidism developed in about 30.8% of cases. Permanent hypothyroidism is likely to occur in those with thyroid antibodies indicating thyroiditis. Amiodron induced hypothyroidism can be treated with levothyroxine supplementation if the clinical condition does not permit withdrawal of amiodron. Those without pre-existing thyroid disease may become euthyroid within 2-4 to four months of stopping amiodron in clinically permissible situations. Initial set of references for amiodron and thyroid dysfunction. Final set of references for amiodron and thyroid dysfunction. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share, and post your valuable comment below this video.